Good morning, uh, everybody. My name is uh, Maart Spit. I'm IT lead uh, within uh, ABN AMRO. One of my hobbies is uh, APIs. And uh, in this uh, 20 minutes, we try to uh, get you along our journey uh, so far on the API and digital uh, ecosystem. So, uh, Koen? Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Koen Adels. I'm product owner open banking at ABN AMRO. And basically, that's uh, in the past the API platform and developer portal and considering you as our new customer. And in our uh, talk today, we are going to explain why APIs are such an important topic uh, within a bank uh, and uh, ABN AMRO specifically. Uh, bef uh, before we do that, just to elaborate a bit on which kind of a bank we are. Uh, so ABN AMRO, just like Rabobank uh, was be uh, taught about before, is a big bank. And basically, if you uh, look at the three big banks in the Netherlands, they have multiple business lines. So we have retail banking, private banking, commercial banking, and corporate in and institutional banking. Uh, just to show you a bit on, uh, on the size, uh, if I look at retail banking, we're a top three player in, uh, in the Netherlands, the prime uh, Dutch bank for 20% of the Dutch population, number one in mortgage production, and number two in savings. And one typical thing about the Dutch customers, which all Dutch banks are uh, yeah, getting used to, is uh, the, the digital mindset that the Dutch customers have. And if we compare uh, the Netherlands to other nations in Europe, you really see that we are digitally minded and uh, expect a lot from the, from the channels of a, of a bank. And then, a new regulation comes into play. May I see some hands? Who knows PSD2? That's nice. There are, there are lots of hands uh, popping up now. If I would have asked that question about two years ago, a lot of hands would stay down. I was explaining often what Payment Service Directive uh, 2 was, and it was a, a European regulation to open up banking uh, so that third parties can build applications on top of your bank account as well. Typically, the payment data and initiating payments. And in this year, the past uh, year, a lot of communication happened via Dutch news sites. And also the Dutch National Bank uh, did a whole campaign on, uh, on uh, TV. Um, and basically, we are currently at the stage that banks are offering uh, their PSD2 APIs, uh, that companies, FinTech, Big Tech, other banks are now developing their applications, and it's up to the customer whether they like it to share that transaction data to a third party, yes or no. It's really up to the customer. So is it useful or tricky? That's up to you. To explain a bit about why PSD2, uh, so the European uh, authorities, they wanted to uh, stimulate the digital economy within Europe. They wanted to increase the competition between all kinds of uh, companies that are working in, uh, in banking. But one other important part is, and that's something that we are not familiar with within the Netherlands, it's also to better protect the customer. Because if I would uh, go to Germany, then API technology and sharing your data via API technology wasn't the way to go. Um, there wasn't, uh, for a long time, an ideal protocol. Uh, what you did see is that companies like Sofort used screen scraping as the technology to share uh, your data. Um, within the Netherlands, screen scraping wasn't allowed, but a lot of other countries it was, and this regulation has also been used to better protect the customers by implementing API technology as uh, te technology to go to. And basically, all banks need to provide three APIs. So it's account information service, where did I spend my money on, how, do, uh, how much money do I have on my bank account, and if I have this for multiple banks, I can get multiple bank overviews and uh, provide you with better advice. Payment initiation, is about initiating a payment. So if I connect that to a loyalty card of uh, Albert Heijn, for instance, I could create a new payment interaction. 
And the last one is confirmation availability funds. Do I have enough money on my bank account to enter the train station, yes or no? And if your company has a PC to license, you can get production access to these APIs. And basically, that's the challenge what all banks are standing uh, before. So banks understand how to master this channel. But if I would ask you uh, who is still visiting these channels, then a lot of hands will stay down. And it's basically for the big decisions like a mortgage or a big loan or uh, financial advice that people are still going to our branches. But all the other stuff is happening via our digital channels. And when we introduced internet banking in the year 2000, it was about digitizing those services that we already had in our physical uh, channels to a digital. And it was, how do you provide that on a big screen? Then in 2011, uh, the, the challenge started to provide those same services via small screens. It requires a whole different kind of interaction. And what you see happening now is that we, as a bank, get a new digital channel, which is APIs. And then it's not the challenge about how do I do the front end right, but it's how do I scale my uh, back end in such a way that I also can provide my services via third party channels, and also how do I arrange security uh, in, a, in a good way. Forrester already predicts that a lot of banks won't grasp the, uh, the, the impact of this. So that a lot of banks won't think far ahead enough to really see the opportunities uh, that lay ahead. And therefore, in the future, they, uh, they might become the, yeah, the back-end utility providers. Um, that's something that we as a bank don't want to become. So what you see is that our mobile banking app is already using the APIs of the other banks, like Rabobank, uh, the Volksbank, so SNS, and ING, to provide you with multi-bank overviews. Also, our GRIP application, so that's a very nice app in which we categorize your transactions and give you financial advice. Uh, we cooperate with Tink, which is a Swedish fintech, um, and we provide them with APIs and consume their APIs back. And this is how you uh, see that currently banks are working with... <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Um, I think as long as the slides are visible, just uh, continue and uh, yeah. I guess we're done scaling. Uh, <laughs> okay, so. thank you. So uh, we're working with Tink to uh, build new kind of applications, new services to our customers. And this is also where big banks are cooperating with smaller fintech to, uh, to improve the lives of our customers. But we need to speed up. Uh, because what you do see is that uh, the big tech and those same fintechs are challenging banks to what banking could be. For instance, Apple Card, uh, which is currently functioning in the US. And also these new kind of digital channels, like the Google Home and the vo uh, other voice assistants, are challenging on what the banking interaction could be. So we as a bank, and all other banks really need to think in a different way. And it, that's moving away from thinking as an ego, uh, the ecosystem, where it's about centralized innovation, the data is ours, and the customer interaction is always via our own channels, and innovation is only done by us, to more an ecosystem where innovation is happening more in a distributed way, uh, more shared and open, and really thinking through which kind of uh, strategies we could implement uh, with that. And an API, in that sense, is the digital building block, which is very helpful in multiple ways. It helps us to speed up our own developments. It helps uh, cross-domain innovation. It helps us to reach customers via third-party channels and uh, channels that we are currently not in as, and uh, to uh, increase the innovations that we can do by ourselves, but also using others. 
So the idea we have is we want to empower our own developers and third-party developers with great APIs to improve banking for our customers. Mart. Yeah. So one of my learnings in this presentation is to keep focusing on this and not on the screen behind me. This really yeah. feeds my Pavlov uh, reaction to look at, hey, are we still, uh, are we still there? Uh, thanks, Kuhn, for the, uh, for the uh, introduction. So Kuhn, Kuhn uh, talked about uh, uh, ecosystems. So let, uh, let's look at the role of uh, traditional banks and at the architecture uh, of that. I think you can, in a really high level, depict it in a concentric, uh, concentric way. I think this uh, applies to ABN AMRO, obviously, but to other banks uh, as well. So in the center of that, uh, we are involved in building our own capabilities. So a payment, uh, a payment system, or a ledger, or a mortgage administration. With these capabilities, we've built and launched and LCM'd our products, uh, like uh, doing a transfer, uh, bo booking a mortgage, get a loan, and stuff like that. Uh, and next to that, we've built our own channels, mobile banking, internet banking. Kuhn had a, had a slide of that uh, before, our own uh, physical uh, web shops. And we have uh, we pushed that to our own uh, clients. And I think these, the, the, the key word here is own. Own capabilities, own products, own distribution channels, and own clients. And I think uh, looking to the, the transformation we're, we're in, uh, that's it, that, is about to, uh, that is about to change. Are we still there? Yeah. So, of course, we have still uh, capability uh, providers, uh, and ABN AMRO definitely will play, uh, play a role in that. But next to that, we have also uh, others in our, uh, let's say, ecosystem. So third-party uh, business, uh, business capabilities, as we, uh, as we call them. Think of the cadaster, which has a lot of information about um, uh, real estate, eh, which is a very important uh, uh, aspect or information for commercial, uh, commercial loans. Think about financial uh, pension data of clients, which we want to bring into our products eh, to make them better and into our channels to have a better understanding of the, uh, the position uh, and the needs of a certain, uh, of a certain client. Uh, then on the products, of course, we will have our own products. We still have that uh, today, but it will be, uh, there will be other products as well. And I think the Apple, uh, uh, the Apple Pay is a, is a nice example of that. That's not an ABN AMRO product, that's a product of Apple. But we offer them in our distribution channels, and we painted it a little bit, uh, to our clients. Eh? So I think that's a nice example where you see as well that the ecosystem of, of the things we offer to our clients is, is really increasing. <coughs> On the distribution channel, we also have external, uh, external uh, channels. Think of a uh, travel insurance which you want to offer to your clients when they uh, book a business trip or a holiday. That's the moment the client thinks about, okay, now I need to, uh, or I want to have an insurance as well. He's not on our channel or on abnamro.nl, no, he's at his uh, uh, travel agency. On that moment, he thinks about, okay, do, do I need to uh, have an insurance or not? And on that moment, we want to be there. Um, next to that, Kuhn uh, told us about the, uh, the Tink, uh, uh, the Tink uh, initiative. Tink uh, used to be a, a small uh, startup, um, and they had a very cool uh, product about financial insight in, uh, in Sweden. So we took, that, uh, we took that proposition, we painted it uh, ABN AMRO colors, and we offering, are offering it to our, own, uh, to our own clients. Back then, I was the lead architect of the, of the project. And I said, yeah, yeah, Marta, that's, uh, that's nice, let's do this. Uh, so uh, please send me your APIs, and then we do it uh, tomorrow, and then see how we, can, uh, how we can make this work. Then I scratched the back of my head, I said, yeah, yeah, APIs, APIs. That, let, let me get back on that, I said. Huh? So in this, uh, let's say, new ecosystem where ABN AMRO partly plays a role, integration and APIs are very, very vital. If you want to do this properly, you need to become good at APIs. And that's the journey ABN AMRO is currently in, which we started roughly two years ago. <coughs> so how do we do that? That API first thinking or that API becoming good in, uh, in APIs? Well, first of all, what we learned, it's also about culture. Of course, it's about technology, but it's also about culture. 
about, okay, I design my API first before I start building or changing my, uh, my applications. And that's a very, uh, that's what we learned, that's a very important thing about this API journey. Yeah? Culture is about understanding, wanting, yeah? and a certain community about, uh, about, uh, about APIs. Very important. Next to that, obviously, we need to enable them with state-of-the-art integration platforms. We're coming from an, uh, from an ESB area, I would say. We still have an, uh, an ESB. We will continue to have the ESB. But next to that, there are way, other, uh, way more technologies to, uh, to do this. So we heavily invested in API management. So we uh, built our own uh, or implemented our own uh, API uh, uh, platform. But also uh, one of the tech trends is, I guess, uh, streaming technology, uh, Kafka, which plays a role in integration uh, and in the API sphere, I would say. Um, next to that, uh, the, uh, the, so I talked about the community which we want to, uh, which we want to have. So we are offering uh, uh, cookbooks, uh, best practices, all that kind of stuff to enable our, um, our, uh, our developers. So what is a good API? Business meaningful, easy to discover, resource-based, reusable, easy to understand. Now, a lot of you will think, yeah, Martin, those are nice open doors. Eh? I get that. But what is easy to understand? And what is real resource-based? If I talk to our uh, end, user, uh, uh, end user grid and I ask them about what a resource account is, they will say, yeah, that's your login account to your laptop. It's identified by your user ID. And if I ask that to our uh, banking uh, backend, they'll say, yeah, that's a bank account identified by the IBAN. If I ask someone from the business what is an account, they'll say, yeah, that's how we order, uh, order our clients. Yeah? So it's a set of clients identified by the client ID. So we have maybe 100 different, different definitions of what the resource account is. So although we agree it should be resource-based and we should have a nice overview of good resources, that's really, really hard. So how did we solve that? Still by a central governance on resources. Yeah, and that's a lot of work because a lot of people will claim product, contract, account, and that kind of stuff, user, yeah, as, a, as, their rest, uh, as their rest resource. Um, another thing we did is we thought, okay, but if you, if you want to have this API culture in where developers can easily uh, see APIs, we need to have a portal, uh, they should uh, be able to test them, and we should become really good in documenting that. Now, maybe some of you uh, have some experience with documentation as well. Uh, we do that, we do that a lot, but writing good documentation is really, really hard. I used to be an uh, architect in the, in, the, in the payments area, and then uh, if, if, if someone asked me something about payments, I will explain naturally the system and how it works, and that it is not that easy, it's really complex, and we see that same uh, thought, uh, see, see we, we see that in the interfaces as well. So for a typical developer, it's really hard to think about, okay, but I, 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 what is, what is the, the understanding of my client and how do I write a proper or design a proper API interface? So we're wanting to help them. So we do that with a full-time tech writer. So we hire the tech writer and say, your sole job is to train and coach our development community and to get them uh, write proper, uh, fancy, understandable, easy to understand, business meaningful documentation. But again, that's a bumpy road. It's really, really hard. Uh, this is an old one. Kun? Yeah. So, uh, like Maarten explained, um, we are on the API first uh, journey, and that's quite a journey. So, it's all about believing, understanding, enabling teams, and supporting. In the end, everybody internally and externally wants this. Uh, and that's also uh, the ambition in the end. We really want to service our developers internally and externally in just a good way, just as good as we do in our branches, and understand what they need and give the services that they need as well. Uh, so in 2017, we also launched the uh, first developer portal. So if you go to developer.abnmro.com, 
Uh, you see uh, that we have an overview of all the API products, how to get started on our APIs, a central change log, a blog about our APIs uh, that you can use. And if I click on the API products, I get to an overview with all the services that you can build on. You can see the account information and payment initiation, uh, but also two APIs that I'm going to show you and explain a bit more about. And those are the Tiki payment uh, request and the foreign exchange uh, trade API. Um, what you can do if you go to the developer portal, you create an account and you can uh, start working on each of these uh, APIs immediately. You just create an application and you start building. So you all know Tiki. It now has about 6 million users in the Netherlands, and when you go out for dinner and we're all Dutch, or a lot of people in, in this room are Dutch and want to split the bill, then you send the Tiki payment request. And what we got to learn uh, about uh, in the past few years is that we learned a lot of people to pay, uh, repay uh, their friends immediately, so within one day or even within one hour. And a lot of invoices that companies are sending got paid about in a month. Uh, and the interactions are not that uh, fast and easy. So a lot of companies were uh, approaching us if they could use Tiki as well uh, for their use cases. So for that end, we built it the uh, Tiki business app. And as a company, you now also can send Tiki payment requests to pay uh, bills. Uh, we also have the tickle, uh, Tiki portal. So if you, for instance, are a web camera team and you are interacting with your customer via uh, WhatsApp uh, and you want the customer to pay something, you can also send a payment uh, request. But of course, this is all manual work and it requires a person to send that Tiki uh, payment request. Um, to improve the lives and to automate stuff, we enable you as a developer to uh, build on top of our APIs. Uh, we have the Tiki Fast Checkout API and the Tiki Payment Request API. And if I go to developer.abnmro.com, uh, you can basically see how that Tiki API is working. And it is pretty much the same as you experience on your mobile phone. So if you look at the left side screen, uh, then or on the left of the screen, you can see which operations you need to call and uh, uh, to interact with to send a payment request. So first, you post a platform, which is creating your account from which you are going to uh, send Tiki payment requests. You create a user where you are going to send your payment request to. You do your payment request, you get your information about it, and also whether that uh, payment request has been paid or not. Then on the right uh, side of the screen, you can see which information we are providing you via the API and also a sample request. And it's pretty easy to get started. But uh, like we explained, we also want uh, to go further. So that's also why we provide Postman collections. So it's basically with a push of the button, immediately uh, uh, the files are uploaded to your Postman and you can start it, uh, get started immediately. This is the Tiki Payment Request API. Uh, the other one that we want to show you is the uh, Foreign Exchange Trade API, and I have a video on that. Digital world. New technologies are raising customer expectations on banking services. In foreign exchange trading, electronic platforms and apps replaced voice trading. The next level of treasury automation requires integration with APIs. ABN AMRO offers a RESTful foreign exchange API. With this API, you can receive rates, trade on quotes, and request transaction history. The API is designed to handle large volumes of small FX transactions. This allows for full protection against FX risk while minimizing manual handling. Together with the payment APIs from ABN AMRO, complete treasury workflows can be automated. Getting access is easy. Just follow the instructions on ABN AMRO's developer portal.
Yeah, so I, I, I consider this a nice example where we put a, uh, a capability, a fix in this case, uh, into, um, yeah, into an open product which can be used uh, via an API in, in the, the user journeys of our, uh, of our clients. Um, yeah, so that sums up uh, our, uh, our talk and our journey about, uh, uh, about APIs and open banking. That is definitely uh, not, uh, not finished yet. I question whether it will ever be, uh, be finished. Hopefully you get some, uh, some, uh, some insights. Um, if you want to hear more about the security part of it, we have a technical session with Simona later today. Um, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>